critique of May. Existentialism in general and May's psychology in particular have been criticized as being anti-intellectual and anti-theoretical. May acknowledged the claim that his views did not conform to the traditional concept of theory, but he staunchly defended his psychology against the charge of being anti-intellectual or anti-scientific. He pointed to the sterility of conventional scientific methods and their inability to unlock the ontological character of willing, caring, and acting human beings. May held that a new scientific psychology must recognize such human characteristics as uniqueness, personal freedom, destiny, phenomenological experiences, and especially our capacity to relate to ourselves as both object and subject. A new science of humans must also include ethics. The actions of living, self-aware human beings are never automatic, but involve some weighing of consequences, some potentiality for good or ill. Until this new science acquires greater maturity, we must evaluate May's views by the same criteria used for each of the other personality theorists. First, have May's ideas generated scientific research? May did not formulate his views in a theoretical structure, and a paucity of hypotheses is suggested by his writings. Some research, such as Jeff Greenberg and Associates' investigations on terror management, relates generally to existential psychology, but these studies do not specifically flow from May's theory. On this first criterion of a useful theory, therefore, May's existential psychology receives a very low score. Second, can May's ideas be verified or falsified? Again, existential psychology in general and May's theory in particular must be rated very low on this criterion. The theory is too amorphous to suggest specific hypotheses that could either confirm or disconfirm its major concepts. Third, does May's philosophically oriented psychology help organize what is currently known about human nature? On this criterion, May would receive an average rating. Compared with most theorists discussed in this book, May has more closely followed Gordon Allport's dictum, do not forget what you have decided to neglect. May did not forget that he excluded discourses on developmental stages, basic motivational forces, and other factors that tend to segment the human experience. May's philosophical writings have reached deep into the far recesses of the human experience and have explored aspects of humanity not examined by other personality theorists. His popularity has been due in part to his ability to touch individual readers, to connect with their humanity. Although his ideas may affect people in ways that other theorists do not, his use of certain concepts were at times inconsistent and confusing. Moreover, he decided to neglect several important topics in human personality, for example, development, cognition, learning, and motivation. As a practical guide to action, May's theory is quite weak. Although he possessed a keen understanding of human personality, May gathered his views more from philosophical than from scientific sources. In fact, he had no objection to being called a philosopher and frequently referred to himself as a philosopher therapist. On the criterion of internal consistency, May's existential psychology again falls short. He offered a variety of definitions for such concepts as anxiety, guilt, intentionality, will, and destiny. Unfortunately, he never presented operational definitions of these terms. This imprecise terminology has contributed to the lack of research on May's ideas. The final criterion of a useful theory is parsimony, and on this standard, May's psychology receives a moderate rating. His writings at times were cumbersome and awkward, but to his credit, he dealt with complex issues and did not attempt to oversimplify human personality. Concept of Humanity like Eric Erickson, May offered a new way of looking at things. His view of humanity is both broader and deeper than those of most other personality theorists. He saw people as complex beings, capable of both tremendous good and immense evil. According to May, people have become estranged from the natural world, from other people, and most of all, from themselves. As people become more alienated from other people and from themselves, they surrender portions of their consciousness. They become less aware of themselves as a subject, that is, the person who is aware of the experiencing self. 
as the subjective self becomes obscured, people lose some of their capacity to make choices. This progression, however, is not inevitable. May believe that people, within the confines of their destiny, have the ability to make free choices. Each choice pushes back the boundaries of determinism and permits new choices. People generally have much more potential for freedom than they realize. However, free choice does not come without anxiety. Choice demands the courage to confront one's destiny, to look within and to recognize the evil as well as the good. Choice also implies action. Without action, choice is merely a wish, an idle desire. With action comes responsibility. Freedom and responsibility are always commensurable. A person cannot have more freedom than responsibility, nor can one be shackled with more responsibility than freedom. Healthy individuals welcome both freedom and responsibility, but they realize that choice is often painful, anxiety-provoking, and difficult. May believe that many people have surrendered some of their ability to choose, but that capitulation itself, he insisted, is a choice. Ultimately, each of us is responsible for the choices we make, and those choices define each of us as a unique human being. May, therefore, must be rated high on the dimension of free choice. Is May's theory optimistic or pessimistic? Although he sometimes painted a rather gloomy picture of humanity, May was not pessimistic. He saw the present age as merely a plateau in humanity's quest for new symbols and new myths that will engender the species with renewed spirit. Although May recognized the potential impact of childhood experiences on adult personality, he clearly favored teleology over causality. Each of us has a particular goal or destiny that we must discover and challenge or else risk alienation and neurosis. May assumed a moderate stance on the issue of conscious versus unconscious forces in personality development. By their nature, people have enormous capacity for self-awareness, but often that capacity remains fallow. People sometimes lack the courage to face their destiny or to recognize the evil that exists within their culture as well as within themselves. Consciousness and choices are interrelated. As people make more free choices, they gain more insight into who they are, that is, they develop a greater sense of being. This sharpened sense of being, in turn, facilitates the ability to make further choices. An awareness of self and a capacity for free choice are hallmarks of psychological health. May also took an intermediate position on social versus biological influences. Society contributes to personality principally through interpersonal relationships. Our relations with other people can have either a freeing or an enslaving effect. Sick relationships, such as those Philip experienced with his mother and sister, can stifle personal growth and leave us with an inability to participate in a healthy encounter with another person. Without the capacity to relate to people as people, life becomes meaningless and we develop a sense of alienation not only from others but from ourselves as well. Biology also contributes to personality. Biological factors such as gender, physical size, predisposition to illnesses, and ultimately death itself, shape a person's destiny. Everyone must live within the confines of destiny, but those confines can be expanded. On the dimension of uniqueness versus similarities, May's view of humanity definitely leans toward uniqueness. Each of us is responsible for shaping our own personality within the limits imposed by destiny. No two of us make the same sequence of choices, and no two develop identical ways of looking at things. May's emphasis on phenomenology implies individual perceptions and therefore unique personalities.